Hi guys, it's Matt from Max on UK here, and in this little tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating graphs that interacts with dynamics. Okay, like this little example here. So as you can see, we've got um, a scene set up where the grass animates, uh, reacting to wind, and we also then have an external object that comes down and pushes that grass away. Okay, so this is what we're going to be doing in this little tutorial. So I'll just close my window. There you can see that I've got my scene set up um, from the one that I've just shown you. And if I just click render quickly, you can see that this is it. So we're going to be creating something like this in Cinema 4D. So I'm just going to go File and New so that you can see me set this up from the beginning. Uh, just adjust my camera a little bit. And then I'm going to create an object that we will put the grass on. OK, and that object is a landscape object. Um, I'm using that because it creates some nice hills, OK, that will allow us to animate something rolling down and getting that nice grass flattening effect without having to animate anything ourselves or keyframe anything. So in a previous tutorial, I have created grass using the uh, grass, grow grass plugin uh, tag that we have in Cinema 4D. With this one, however, I'm going to be using something called hair. OK, so under simulate, OK, we've got hair objects. I'm going to add hair. Now, instantly, wow, that creates an awful lot of hair that will go all over that object. OK, um, this is really useful because it will allow us to use dynamics to affect each of these little points. That's what dynamics actually does. It affects these hair tips. OK, and if I just click render for the moment, OK, you can see that we've got a very, very basic hair setup. OK, there are actually far more hair guides than there are hairs at the moment. So we're going to need to change that quite a bit. The first thing I'm going to do is change the colour. OK, so we're going to want some form of nice green. OK, you want a darker green to start with and then it fades into a lighter green. OK, so if I just click change that and that, OK, and then click render, you can see that we get a much better sort of looking grass colour. Um, obviously, the amount that is there will need to change quite dramatically. So under the hair tag and we look at the hairs, we've only got 5000. OK, normally I go somewhere between 65,000, 70, depending on what it is that you're going to do. Um, let's say 70,000 for this instance. And now if I render, OK, there we go. We get a lot more of them, OK, which will hopefully give us a bit better um, coverage in a minute. Uh, but we do need to definitely adjust that texture a little bit more, don't we? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create myself a physical sky because this will give me some better lighting as well, um, which should allow me to see a little bit more how this grass is going to look if it was lit. OK, so that is a bit better, at least to be able to see what's going on. OK, now one of the simplest things to do is to change the variance when it comes to the colour. So here you've got some settings that allow you to change, OK, how much variant around that colour will be created. So rather than everything being directly from that green to that green, it will change itself. So if I just render, OK, we just get a little bit of colour variance there and that really helps add the effect that we want, that this is more realistic grass. It's a tad shiny at the moment, OK, because it's trying to simulate hair. So I'm just going to lower that quite dramatically at the moment to, say, about 25%. OK, maybe only sort of about 20%. OK, and I'm going to do that for the secondary as well. A quick re-render. There you go, it's not quite so in your face bright, but it is currently all very straight, standy, uppy, downy. And we are going to use some of the settings here that are going to allow us to change that. So we've got some thickness settings here, and at the moment it's set to just one single centimetre. OK, and then its tip is 0.1. OK, I'm just going to increase that to two because I want some thick blades of grass. But then its tip, I only want it to be at one, OK, which means it's going to be quite thick all the way down. 
Okay, and if you just render, you'll be able to see that it is very quite thick grass. Now, one thing you can do is you can change that with this curve. Okay, this will allow it to go between the two. So if I just change that down to there, okay, and lower that a bit, it will change the shape of the grass as you go. And it just allows it to head towards a point, okay, because it's then at zero, and it gives us these sort of sharp blades that we get all the way around. If you don't want it to go all the way to zero and have a bit of a thicker end, then you can do it like that and then render and have a look. That gives us quite nice thickness, but we need to adjust sort of the fact that it's all straight. And some of that we can do with these kinks and frizzes and curls, bends and twists and stuff. So the ones I normally use is the kink. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that on. You can see in the preview that that instantly makes that a little bit more, you know, kinky. Um, and then clumping. Clumping will force the strands to kind of clump together, as you would expect. And then you've got a bend on there, and we can just turn that on. Okay, and you'll see the randomness that this does all together. And then you've got a curl, which you can add as well. The curl gives it an awful lot of curls, so I'm going to lower that down quite a lot to say 25%. And now with all of those on, I'm just going to click render and we'll see what we get. There we go. You can see that we've got quite nice thick that brush, um, thick grass there. You know, you can adjust some of these. You can turn off, turn them on, turn them off, see what it is that you want to do. Maybe if I turn off kink, okay, and then render, you can see what it's doing. Okay, there we go. So it's a much sort of sweeping grass rather than, you know, quite so dead and frizzy. So that gives us a nice effect. Now, the moment I press play, all of the grass sort of flops down to the ground and it all sort of loses its integrity. And that's because of the way the grass is designed to work, you know, working as hair, it's floppy. So what we need to do is we need to adjust its settings. So if I go back to the hair, and then we have its dynamics forces, okay, under its properties, we've got a rest hold percentage. This will determine how much it holds at its rest position. So if I say about 50%, Okay, it will stay roughly around there. Now, if I go back to the beginning and press play, you can see that it starts to bounce a little bit. And that's it kind of keeping where it needs to be. Okay, if I was to render that again, you can see that it is staying relatively in its positions and it's, it's got some nice sort of buzz to it. It's this that will allow the grass to stay standing. Okay, we can see that it's all sort of moving in one direction at the moment. That's all down to the hair material there. So maybe we need to add a little bit of variance when it comes to the clumping or the bending and the twisting and stuff like that. So 50% variation. So maybe now if we render that and have a look. Okay, it's a little bit better. Um, curling. Okay, there we go. And then say 50%. Here we go. There you go, quite a grassy smattering there. Um, gives a nice effect of a nice thick green grass sort of area. Awesome, okay, cool. Now we need to get it to be affected by wind. Now with hair, there is a dynamics and then there's forces and things like that. So it is dynamics enabled, which means one of the easiest things to do to get it to move is to go to our simulations part look at particles and go to turbulence. And this turbulence will affect the wind, okay, once we tell it to. So going to the hair tag, hair object, sorry, and then, okay, under the forces area, we have forces to include, okay, or at this moment, exclude. So we are going to want to drag and drop the turbulence into the forces and then include it. Okay, and that means now that this will be affected by that turbulence. Okay, if I go back to the beginning and press play, you can see that it wobbles, and it is wobbling a little bit more than it was before. 
but we can increase that and play around with the settings to see what we want to work. Now, these things do a variety of different effects on the turbulence, therefore effects on the wind. So the strength is sort of like how much it's going to affect the wind, okay? The scale is how many ripples there are going to be, okay? And the frequency is how much it changes between those ripples. So if I was to increase the strength of the wind to say 50, okay, and then the scale, so then we kind of like go 25% scale, and then press play. Okay, you can see that there is some nice rippling effect going on in that wind. I don't want it to be too crazy, I just want it to give the effect that there is something moving here, okay, and it's rippling its way around. That gives us a sense that the the scene is alive rather than being far too static. So I'm just gonna set my scene up ready for the next bit, okay? And the next bit's relatively simple. I'm going to create myself another landscape object, okay, which makes it, you know, self quite large. And then I'm going to make it spherical, okay? And that sphericalness gives me this nice sort of rocky look that I'm gonna go for, for my rock that's going to fall and going to disturb my scene. It's gonna rock the grass as it were. So just turning the grass off for a moment so that we can't see it. Okay, we need to do two things. To the landscape, we need to add a collider tag, a collider body. So if we were to press play in this simulation, nothing happens, okay? We're gonna want this rock to fall down quite nicely. Um, and to do that, we add another tag. So if I go to my one that I'm going to call rock, and then I go to my tags, and if I go to simulations, I go to rigid body. Okay, that means that this is going to say, stay its same shape as it's been affected by the forces. Press play and it falls, boom. Hits the ground, disappears, never to be seen again. This is because we need to add the collider body to this landscape. So under the tags, under simulation tags, I need to add collider body. This means that the hard body will collide with it and press play. And there it goes, it rolls its way off. Okay, maybe if I was to just adjust my landscape a little bit and press play. Okay, you can see that it's being affected by the wind. Okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna change that to static mesh, because that means it's gonna meet more of the sort of rock falls and pitfalls of this. There you go, and you can see it's now being affected by the roughs and the furrows that are on this landscape object. So under the rock, okay, we now have this effect that it is hitting the ground. But if I turn my hair back on, you will see that it makes no difference whatsoever and the rock will go straight through it and the hair grows straight through the rock. This is because we need to add another tag to our rock and this is a hair collider. So under the hair tags, we add a hair collider and this means that it will now collide with the hair. So if I just press play, okay, it's gonna lag out a little bit to see what it's doing, but you can see that as it bounces, it starts to affect and cause this channel that goes all the way through and that hair is affected by that rock. Okay, so one of the best ways to see, and the only real way to see whether or not this is working, is to do a quick render. So what I'm going to do, just adjust my positions of the camera there, I'm just going to render this picture view just to make sure that I'm happy with the way that all of the grass looks. Okay, yep, yeah, looking cool. I just want to cut off the bottom there so I can't see the bottom of this rock okay what i might do as well just in case we can see it i might just add a texture to this um, landscape so under my content browser i'm just going to do a search for mud okay actually i'll just go for that easier and drag and drop that to the landscape object and just in case we can see through it means that we will be able to see a nice rocky mud texture underneath. I'll try and put my teeth back in to say that. 
Um, maybe with the hair, I'll just lower that amount to say 50,000. Okay, and we'll see whether or not that makes a difference, whether or not we can see too much of the ground underneath. No, there we go. Okay, but you will find that the less hairs that you use, the quicker things are to render, which is nice. So now we've got that and we've got everything set up ready, I shall do a quick preview render and then we shall see where we're at. I will speed this process up so you can have a look in a minute and uh, I will talk to you in a second. Okay, cool. So let's just have a little look. It's going to take a couple of playthroughs for it to store all of its stuff. Hey, there you go. This looks like a hidden rabbit. So you can see that instantly we've got a little rock that falls through and has its effect. It's being affected by the ground, so it's following all of that uh, terrain and it is moving that grass as well. So the implications of this, you know, if you've got something that needs to move grass out of the way, if you've got some form of tag that you can add to an object, you know, and you know how to do this, you need, need to know how to use all of this dynamics and how to use the tags and the, the hair colliders and things. I hope this has been a useful tutorial for you guys to have um, followed and um, that you put it to some good use. So take care and I will catch you next time.